Connectivity seems to be a common theme these days. We all need to be connected. I don't think in the history that any of us have been alive have we seen more of a need to be connected than now. In fact, even what we're connected to by not being connected to each other, again, that's why I'm so excited about today. Us not being connected means that we reach out and long out by nature to be connected to something. And what we end up reaching out and being connected to is usually falsehoods or mixed messages or some other nonsense. I speak of the news and all of television. We look and we find any kind of media or any kind of anything on TV that has, that, that, that has, a, has even the smallest story and it will somehow desire to connect to you and you to it. This virus is a perfect example. We cannot be connected with each other. But how many of us know the actual rules and regulations that have been given by the state and the union? Very few, if any. And it's not your fault. It's because you've been given different, all kinds of different uh, levels. Less than 10 people, that's the law. Well, no, it's not. It's never been the law. Less than 30? That's the law. Less than 50? Remember when it began? Less than 50? Less than 100? That was the law. Well, it, it wasn't. In fact, it couldn't have been unless martial law was enacted. Okay, that's the that's the, 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 the mixed signals that we've all been getting about the virus. But regardless of all that, you, we would be fools to not take precautions. Regardless. So, my point being is that when we're not able to connect with each other and we're forced to connect over the internet and we're forced to hear sermons over the internet on Facebook or whatever it may be, we're hearing it and we're, and we're connected to it, but it's not quite the same thing. I mean, it was not the same thing. To be connected in this way. So surely we will be sensible and comply. But when we think of connectivity, how often does this church come to your mind? And it's an honest question. It's not a negative question saying that it doesn't come to your mind. I'm asking an honest question. When you think of connectivity to people, how often does Augustana come to your mind? It comes to my mind often, not just because I am a called and ordained servant of her, but because of you. What you don't see from my point of view is the, is the sparkle of faith that God has given each and every one of you. You can tell a Christian from a pagan. At least I can. Because that sparkle of faith that's in your eyes and that's in your heart connects us in a way that can't be broken. Would anyone like to guess what word I'm going to say next? Faith. Faith is that which connects us all. Faith in Jesus Christ. We are justified by grace through faith. And in that connectivity, we cannot be broken, we cannot be severed. And the reason that I bring all of that up is because 
of verse 18 in our epistle text. Of his own, that is Jesus, of his own, he brought us forth out of the word of truth, that is the word of God, that gives us faith. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Now the English here kind of can kind of confuse us because when it says a kind of first fruits, it doesn't mean kind of first fruit. It means a type of first fruit. It doesn't mean you're halfway first fruit and halfway not first fruit. It means that you are connected to a first fruit. And what and who, what does what does scripture say regarding first fruits? It comes right after Christ crucified, Christ buried, and Christ resurrected. It says that Christ was the first fruits born of the dead. Christ is the first fruits born of the dead. Now, we understand by language that if there is a first fruit born of the dead, then there must be some to follow. Or else it would be the only fruit born of the dead. So when we are called by truth as a kind of first fruits from the dead, it means surely as Christ has raised from the dead, so we are connected like chains to his wounds. That when he resurrected, we too have the hope and the promise that like being chained to his wounds, we will rise from the dead as well. We are kind of first fruits because we are connected to the first fruits of the dead. Jesus Christ who raised from the dead. So if you wonder about that, that, that sparkle in, in, in your eyes and that faith that brings us all together, even at Augustana Lutheran Church, loving the building, loving the people, we're connected as well to Christians throughout the world because we're connected as kinds of first fruits of Christ who was the first fruits born of the dead. Does that make sense? Is that coming through? It's like if you pick a bat, I, I, I fought back, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I fought back and forth on illustrations on this one, but I think I got one. It's like when you're in the store and you pick up a batch of grapes by the vine. If you pick up, pick it up by the vine, all the grapes come with it. If you pick it up by a grape, the whole thing falls. Christ is the vine and the first from the dead. He is the first fruit from the dead and we are the grapes who by faith follow along with Christ as a kind of first fruit, not separate, but connected to Christ. And James goes on to say this to you. You are a kind of first fruits from his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, act like it. I'm paraphrasing. But that's what he says. You are the kind of first fruits of his creatures. So know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person, as representatives of Christ who bears his name as Christian, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Those are three things that we are all guilty of. Because anger of man does not produce righteousness. And notice that word also, produce, the production of, 
first fruits. If you are not, if you are slow to hear, quick to speak, and quick to anger, the anger of man will produce like a fruit, will not produce like a fruit the righteousness that God requires. Therefore, put away all filthiness, rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word that saves your souls. In other words, trust in the Lord, trust in the word, and quit talking anger and hatred. Be, slow, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Because the anger of man does not produce righteousness. Nothing we say in anger can produce righteousness. Anything that we say in anger can only produce foulness and filthiness, as it says here. When this virus started to take over, I prepared myself as the pastor of Augustana, knowing that any decision that was made was going to be the right one for some and the wrong one for others. Because no one alive has ever pastored through a pandemic. I knew that I was going to make mistakes. Further, more than that, more than just to say mistakes, I was going to sin. And I knew that no matter what I did, some would be angry, some would be quick to speak, and slow to hear. And I knew that I would give them reason. Because I, did, because I had to follow my conscience, Scripture, and, and Scripture and the fidelity of my ordination vows that are just as uh, that are just as binding as my wedding vows. And so to those vows, I could not adulterate any more than I could my wedding vows. And still can't and will not. So I ask this. Regardless of how you think that I acted during this pandemic and knowing that None of us knew what to do. I ask that you be quick to hear me now. Slow to speak and slow to anger. And know that all that I have done, I have done because Christ loves you. Take myself out of the equation. Christ loves you so much. No matter what mistakes I make, if he spoke to Balaam through an ass, he can speak through me. So regardless of what I have done, if you believe it to be wrong, I pray you be quick to hear this, slow to speak, and slow to anger because we must put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive in meekness the word of God because I truly believe in my heart that I am one of you grapes that's all that when the vine that after the vine was lifted I will be with you in the bunch. And there are no, there's no one I would rather be connected with than you bunch. Thanks be to God for the forgiveness of sins that He's, that he's brought us through this and continues to bring us through this. And that as the vine is lifted, when Christ returns, that not only will we bunch of ragamuffins be together, but so will the dead as we have confessed in our creed.
He will come to judge the living and the dead. Which means there will be many a grape risen, ripened, being brought into heaven with Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.